Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll examine an important understudied area, namely the risk versus benefit of specific psychotropic medications in the treatment of non-suicidal self-injury. Eggert and colleagues conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis to try to help raise awareness of this issue and also make specific recommendations for future areas of inquiry. This has enormous clinical relevance as non-suicidal self-injury in children and adolescents is recognized as being increasingly common and predicts future non-suicidal self-injury in children and adolescents as well as future suicide attempts. Non-suicidal self-injury is more common than was previously believed and occurs in about 65 to 7.5% of adolescents and is significantly more common in girls than in boys. These adolescents have increased risk for hospitalization and polypharmacy is often the rule rather than the exception in these adolescents. There remains considerable uncertainty at this point among clinicians as to what are the safe and effective pharmacotherapies in this population, what are the risks, how do you assess the risks and benefits. So the good news is that according to this review and meta-analysis, SSRIs did not have a significant impact on the incidence of non-suicidal self-injury in depressed or anxious adolescents. So this finding does not support prior proposed relationships between self-harming behavior and antidepressant drugs in children and adolescents that, as you all know, prompted the FDA black box warnings. There were also no significant differences among SSRIs, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors such as duloxetine, venlafaxine, and placebo. There did appear to be an increased risk for non-suicidal self-injury in depressed adolescents treated with benzodiazepines and trazodone. Of particular interest in adolescents with ADHD, atomoxetine and amphetamine were the medications associated with the highest risk for non-suicidal self-injury. Recognizing that ADHD itself, with its decreased impulse control, is a risk factor for non-suicidal self-injury, choosing a medication for adolescents with ADHD and non-suicidal self-injury takes on greater importance and can be challenging. Methylphenidate compounds appear at this point to be the pharmacotherapy of choice for adolescents with ADHD and non-suicidal self-injury. So I would recommend all things being equal that if you have an adolescent with ADHD and non-suicidal self-injury, methylphenidate would be the first-line pharmacotherapy. The bottom line, though, is that there is very little study in this area with a striking lack of data, which is very limited. The analysis here was also greatly influenced by two very well-done studies, but still it's only two studies, one by Brent and colleagues, the Tordia article on treatment-resistant depression in adolescents published in the American Journal of Psychiatry, and another by Findling and colleagues on the use of escitalopram in adolescent depression published in the Journal of Child and Adolescent Psychopharmacology. Again, both of these are excellent reports, but controlled studies in children and adolescents are clearly lacking and urgently needed. Nonetheless, I think this study does provide some highly relevant clinical information regarding non-suicidal self-injury and its association or lack thereof with different psychotropic medications. And most importantly, it points us toward the next stage of needed controlled research with a variety of medications with different subgroups, because it's possible that certain subgroups will have a higher or lower risk given that the conditions study depression, ADHD, anxiety, psychosis are so heterogeneous.